none other than Formula 3 world champion Gabriel Borsalito. Welcome to the show. Welcome Thank to the show. Thank you very mate. much for the invite. Appreciate it. Hello, guys. Um, probably touch so. to the side there, mate. Don't want to change it too much. We've got this camera looking at James. We wouldn't want you to. You don't want to ruin my shot. Yeah. Mate, so yeah. <laughs> People have died for this. Here. You just move a little bit to that way. Oh, I'm almost in there. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go, mate. Sweet. This would have been a great thing to organise before we started rolling, but we'll carry it. We'll it's power fine. Through. It's fine. It's fine. We're going. How are you, mate? You're in town. You're straight off the plane um, yeah. from the Middle East uh, into London for the small awards. Nice. So, it was uh, quite a window. crazy travel these last yeah. two days. I've been in Abu Dhabi for the F2 test, and now I was in Milan for one day. Just changed the clothes in the, yeah. in the bag and. Put everything. I have the hour today of auto sport. Mm -hmm. um, so conveniently, now you've just revealed to everyone that, that we essentially just a quick wardrobe. So I've only put on a cardigan, so I'm not. Yeah, really you've not even changed. Me. I've <laughs> changed. Obviously, we had Luke Browning on 15 minutes ago, and we're now fully into Gabby yeah. Bortoletto. So there you go. <laughs> Actually, line. Luke's just right there. Right? Yes. You can't see him on. You can't see him on screen, but he's Shut just up! right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so how are you, mate? How was the the first experience in the F2 wagon? Uh, it's a different car, let's like, see like this. <laughs> you know, what are you guys laughing? No, just, just wondering what your feedback and <laughs> thoughts are ahead I mean, of the, uh, the, well, after this three-day test that you've just done. I, I mean, the car is, it's different than F3. It's much uh, heavier. It's um, it's more powerful in some, some ways, but I mean, F3 but is very, is. it's very fun to drive, mm -hmm. you know. F3, it's a unique car. And I don't know what I prefer, to be honest. F2 has, has, nice things of being very powerful so you can just go on power and you really feel the turbo you know coming in and everything mm. but at the same point it's a very very heavy car on low speeds you know mm. very well what i'm talking about and, so, <laughs> and were you racing this year's car or next year's yeah year, right? next year it's still private no one's you know we have an idea how it's the car and everything Yuri knows. But, he's yeah. been testing it he says it's worse but continue Perfect. But the, uh, <laughs> I, I was gonna, I'm going to bring that up. Actually, it was one of my points in the question. So you go, obviously, you've won F3 this year. We'll go through that season in a minute. But going into F2 next year with a regulation change, the old guard like your Novalax, your Armstrongs, your Drugoviches, you know, your your poor chairs. Not that he can do it again. Um, they don't have that knowledge of the car like you would have been up against the last three years, I suppose, four yeah. years. So level almost like a level much more level playing field i should say going into next year does that give you a bit more confidence or are you a little bit more still just nervous about what that new car is going to feel like i don't care to be honest like i mean good answer the new car is it's something i think it will not change so much driving wise so and mm. a good driver you know you don't take ages to to adapt to a new car you know mm. you you would just adapt to it and that's it so it's a new car for everyone but at the same time it's not that it's going to be like uh, something completely the opposite way so yeah. i mean yeah, it's not you're going to bike racing uh, yeah exactly <laughs> man it, it's it's it will be a probably a very small step from the the actual car to the new one mm -hmm. and for sure there will be very strong drivers next year on f2 and I think this is nice because it will be, in my opinion, one of the strongest years in the last years. Mm -hmm. I mean, and um, because a lot of there's a lot know, of rookies this year. A lot of rookies that is coming in mm. from three different different generations. So yep. basically, my generation there is also Kimi coming on now. Mm -hmm. So he's coming from Freca, and uh, there is Martins, Beerman, and all these guys. Yeah. Um, Hauger. So, I mean, there's a lot of good guys in the grid next season. Looking mm. forward to it. Yeah, mate. It should be good, yeah. It should be, should be great. We'll be commentating. Hey, we'll be on the comms. We'll be hard. We'll be it. commentating it hard, mate. So you better give us some proper performance. What do you mean commenting? Like during uh, the races, live timing? Yeah, mm. of course, mate. We, we've been, Always. I mean, he's been doing it this year. Uh, yeah. We've been doing it for some of the F1 rounds when I was in race in Formula 2. But next year, obviously, I'll have a bit, of, a bit more free time. Okay. So I'll be commentating your races. Yeah. And so if you'd like to tune in for some of the most biased commentary that you, you'd ever hear on yeah. the internet. We'll, we'll be us. pushing you on like crazy. It's not, you know, it's not a level playing field in the commentary box. We it have, we have favourites here at Screaming Meals. Yeah, but we do have favourites at Screaming Meals and you're, you're, you're one of my, my favourites out there. So much, I'll be... I appreciate it, mate. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> so, That's just the Brazilian in me, oh, no, you know? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, you know, okay. you know that we always had this discussion during this year, me and Clem, because... At the end of the day, Clem was in F2, but he spent more time in the F3 truck with me than <laughs> in the actual <laughs> F2 truck. And, uh, but to be honest, it was very helpful for me, you know, having a guy like Clem on my side. And uh, 
Yeah, don't don't get too excited, you know, just because I'm saying good things about you. But it was very nice because Clem, it's it's uh, you well, know when, you, you when he comes in in the room, everyone starts to already <laughs> laugh and you yeah. know because he's going to say they something know what's very fun or shit, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> One or the other. It's either going to be fun or complete <laughs> bullshit. But one of the two. <laughs> but I mean, was it's it's always nice. How's and, how's his Portuguese? Because to my ears, very I good. Don't know. Okay. I, I'm, I, like it's impressive because he doesn't have any lesson. He has for sure a lot of Brazilian friends now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's learning. He's learning. But when he picks up the phone, he's like, Father Mão, to the bay. He's already yeah. like super Portuguese boy. So I'm like. Because I hear one end of it, but I don't know if it's just completely broken Portuguese and you're just. No, no, the accent, it's actually yeah. good. And the accent is always good as well. Yeah, so well, and his is... Novelak accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. I, I, I mean. You can pick. The, these days, you've got a choice of what? Kiwi, British, French, Brazilian. Uh, is there any more? Italian. Is there, sometimes you go a bit Italian. A bit, of, a bit of Scottish. <laughs> you, you can go Scottish. I can sometimes. go Scottish. I can, I, um, <laughs> top of the morning too. I can go Irish too. Yeah, yeah so we've covered um, the British Isles. Fantastic. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Uh, <laughs> I can go French. It's very easy for me. It's a background stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, can uh, do, I can do quite a good Marcus Ericsson or Yuri Vips, like from the Scandinavian countries. <laughs> <laughs> <basically all. laughs> Brother, you're a bit off there. <laughs> all, all, all the words you come through, like you're just pronouncing the letter R the whole time you're saying it. Good on you, James. <laughs> Tell you what, your Donald Trump impression was much better than that. Donald Trump impression is second to none. Nobody does a better impression of Donald Trump than me. <laughs> not even Donald Trump. I've seen it. Played golf with the guy. Good golfer, not great. Anyways, I think we're going to call it a slight break here because the food's just arrived, James. Oh, so, yeah. First thing first, we've had a small break because uh, Gabby, being the uh, ultimate racing driver out here, has just had his five guys. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, drive a diet off season. <laughs> how'd, you rate, how'd you rate the mouth? How'd you rate yeah, the meal? How did you rate the meal? I mean, Clem, <laughs> Clem, when we were choosing what to eat, he, he told me that the cheeseburger was huge. huge. No, wait. Yeah. Is it right? It's quite a large cheeseburger. Yeah, normally. exactly. And then it was like that big. Yeah. So it was fucking. It's happened before. Terrible. It's happened Black before. Yeah. promised size, <laughs> and it's turned out to be that. No, big, it was but okay. It was okay. It was um, missing ketchup for the fries, but the rest you guys eat a lot, actually. Like racing, like that's something I've noticed. Like you guys eat a lot. Well, you know me, I love my food. Yeah. I'm French, and yeah. actually, I haven't been to Brazil. Um, once again, you know, we're going to go back to the Brazil. Well, we've got a Brazil. At least we've got a Brazilian guest this time. Like, yeah. we, we've got a guest from England and you just won't shut the fuck up about Sao Paulo. It's a bit frustrating. But yeah, I know. But yeah, This so week's no, okay. Brazilians, man, they love their food and I love it there because there's so many different, like kinds of food there even different from like like even japanese food's great in brazil like that's the thing i you don't do, get. you get a lot of uh portuguese sort of brazilian infusions in japanese food there so sushi well. samba perfect example sushi uh, samba peruvian great. i think that yeah. is that. um but brazilians also love the motorsport so brazil's probably got arguably one of the the best sort of heritages for motorsport in south america possibly world absolutely is there anything that you could pin that too, like I know that you had your Fittipaldi's, your Senna's, you know, and everybody else's, all the legends there. PKs. PKs, exactly. Thank you. And it like, is it the guys? Is there a culture? Is a you know, from your from your side, is there anything about being Brazilian that you feel I mean, towards uh, motorsport? It's it's difficult to say exactly one reason why normally the Brazilian guys are very good, mm -hmm. but in my opinion, is you know, every country has their own culture and you know you go to finland for example there's a finland driver he's a very cold driver normally mm -hmm. you know he under pressure or not under pressure or under any circumstance the guy can keep himself very it's cold yeah. yeah and in brazil i would say our strength is like um we suffer a lot to you know to make a career work mm -hmm. because you we, we we come from a very not poor country, you know, but, you know, it's very expensive to a Brazilian driver nowadays go to Europe and race and make yeah. a proper career because, you know, Euro is, is completely out of, out of range. It's a different for world the, of yeah, expense. Exactly. Yeah. And also, I think, would you say that also leaving your country, having to, like, move away from your family, your friends? That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say, you know. You need to move and then, for example, I moved when I was 12, Mm. And my brother was living here. He stopped racing like this. I could continue racing, you know. So it's a lot of things involved mm -hmm. that at the end of the day makes you stronger and makes you want to reach the target. Mm -hmm. That in my case is Formula One, for example. I mean, you know, thinking about everything I left in Brazil, everything I had mm -hmm. and everything I could have in Brazil, like uh, uh, from the family that I come from, 
it's it's a good family so mm. you know i i don't miss anything in brazil i have uh, a very good life there and i i said no i don't need this like i really want to be a formula one driver one day so mm. i moved when i was 12 to live by myself here in europe and you know this is something that every day that i woke up and i was feeling a little bit sad or something like this i would remember everything i did so this keep pushing me you know keep mm. pushing me like man look what you did look what you left behind you need to keep pushing you need to be the best you know you need to you know keep smashing yeah. it so i think that's one of the biggest trends of the brazilian because i'm not the only one and i come from a good family mm. imagine the guys that came from a very poor family what yeah. they needed to pass through so yeah no, I mean, it's, so for you, I mean, it sounds as though it more does come from your own personality within you that you want to succeed rather than the sort of national pride, all that kind of stuff. But, it is, you know, there's a lot, there's so many quick guys from Brazil. Shout out to New Zealand as well. We punched above our weight. But yeah, New Zealand's pretty good as well. We're yeah. pretty handy. But, uh, you know, there's a lot. Of, so for you, like when you grew up, like who was the guy when you first started watching F1? Was it Massa? Um, yeah, Massa was driving, but mm -hmm. I mean, Senna is for sure the idol of all yeah. the Brazilians, you know, it's not Massa, it's not Barrichello, they are legends, you know, <laughs> all of them, because all of them made history in, history in Formula 1, but um, Senna is, it's Senna, you know, Yeah, he's arguably the best of all time. Yeah. You know, so I mean, so maybe Senna's like a good like. Yeah, for, he, he was the guy that I always looked for since I was yeah. very young. Even if he was not alive, I would watch the old videos, That's old funny, races, right? heard histories about him, about like you know from my father, from my family. Yeah. And and yeah, uh, nowadays, for example, I I I am lucky enough to have contact with Felipe Massa and Barrichello, all these yeah. Formula One legends that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's I weird to have their number on your phone, right? And you yeah, the exactly. Because yeah. yeah. when Scott Dixon, I got his, you know, when we started talking to each other, I was like, this is fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so. Actually, that's a good question. Who's the most famous person in your phone? Uh, don't start with this. <laughs> uh, I know who it is. <laughs> Who's Luke Browning? <laughs> Luke Browning? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let good me, on you, <laughs> mate. <laughs> Macau winner. Macau let, winner. Let me, let me check. To be, I want to... Who's, who's, the, who's the most famous uh, non-motorsport person you have in your phone? Yeah, actually, that's a good question. No motorsport. Non-motorsport. Don't say James Blair. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not man. saved as a contact, probably. <laughs> um, I need to think, you know. It's not so easy like this. We'll put a, we'll put a photo of Like, that, I yeah. have, uh, for example, Massa's phone. Yeah. Barrichello phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, motorsport, out of motorsport, it's, it's, it's difficult. Mm. Natanzinho. Natanzinho. Not Taylor Swift Nathan. or anything like that. Wait, Nathan. Oh, my God. He doesn't even know the Brazilian singers. I don't know. Forget it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know better than me the Brazilian singers. I know. Yeah. Felipe Amorim. You see? I uh, <laughs> Natanzinho. All the boys, you know? All the boys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All the, all the lads and the lasses at the top of their games. Anita, all of them, you know. Grouse. Great. Um, yeah, hey. do, you want, do you want to give us a Portuguese question? Just while, we're, um, just while we're waiting. Well, do you want to read it in British first? Well, I just did. In I? England. Oh. <laughs> o Brasil tem, sem dúvida, uma das heranças automobilísticas mais ricas de qualquer país do mundo. É de longa a mais significativa da América do Sul. Existe uma razão ou talvez uma pessoa que você identificaria como a grande responsável por isso? Good. Congratulations, mate. Well, can you answer the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give us the I think Senna. Senna, man. But give us the Portuguese. Yeah. In Portuguese. Ah. Com certeza é o Senna, Clay. Ah, grande, Ele né? Ele é o maior de todos os tempos, não tenho o que falar. É, Sim. Ele foi o cara que inspirou todos os brasileiros, eu acredito. Sim. Certo. Certo? Certo. Yeah. So, so, as a Brazilian who have recently signed, congratulations, by the way, with McLaren, to yeah. be part of that program. Thank you very much. You know, stepping into that team that not only Senna, but a lot of other legends from Brazil have had some great yeah. success with. Fittipaldi was the first champion for McLaren. How does it feel to you to be a part of a team that's originally from New Zealand? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, McLaren is its a very historical team. And um, I think since I was very young, one of my dream teams was McLaren. Um, yeah, same as the rest of us, I think. You know, yeah, it was, yeah. was McLaren and especially... It's, McLa it's McLaren and Ferrari, right? Let's be realistic. No. <laughs> no? no? McLaren and Red Bull, man. Oh, okay. So Red Bull's like almost really? like the new... Yeah, I, I guess for the, for the I know, younger that's ones, it's now the forget. new team. Yeah, it can be because like in 
2010, 11, 12, 13, you know, when I basically started racing, Vettel was winning everything, mm. and I was a big fan of him in the moment. So I think Red Bull and, and McLaren, but McLaren was always my biggest one because, you know, Senna and every yeah. every Brazilian driver that has been through there. Such a cool paint scheme as well back in the day. That sort of that chrome and fluoro red. <laughs> to be awesome. honest, yeah, the chrome, the chrome car. No, but the best one is the MP44, mate. Yeah. The I, Marlboro car. Is the, the, the Marlboro car is iconic, but if yeah. I had to pick any car, Actually, that's my next question to you. But if I had to pick any car that I would want to drive in, if I could, I think it would be the uh, the year Fernando and Lewis were in, up against 07. each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, 07, 07 McLaren right. was, A, I think, the nicest looking car of all time. Yeah. In terms of paint job. And also... Like, I quite I like think, the 08 car as well, though, because I liked all like the extra little bits they put on it. But. I think the thing the thing is with those cars, people don't quite realize, but when you compare a current Formula 1 car to an old car... The noise, though. The noise, A, yeah. and then B, how small the old F1 cars used to be. They used to be the size of an F3 car, more or less. Yeah. And now have, they're huge. Have either of you, because you're both a bit younger than me, have either of you been to a Grand Prix that wasn't Turbo Hybrid era? Yeah. I, I reckon you wouldn't have right that, no, oh no. my you've only heard the but oh, I, I didn't it, went to, I, it tickles I didn't went the to inside many. of your brain like those those cars yeah. back before yeah. the turbos I've not went to many Grand Prix in my life well it's, recently uh, you recently have. you've done a few yeah <laughs> guys okay but just because of Formula 3 you know but yeah. before that I've never went to a Formula 1 Grand Prix oh so your first my ever first Grand, Grand Prix, Prix was, was Bahrain no it was uh, Brazil the year before Right. Because I was already signed with Fernando in A14. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he invited me to go there, you know, in Brazil. My that's name. pretty cool that your first ever Grand Prix was yeah. in Alonso invite. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. A14, you know, 14, you know so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got the name on the flag. Was was good. Was, was but yeah. nice. But. So if, if you could pick one car in Formula 1 history that you'd want to race in that is not the Senna McLaren. Uh, Ferrari from Schumacher, man. 2004. There you go. Easy answer. Four. Yeah. yeah. What F about you? F2004. Um, for me, I'd probably go with like a Sterling Moss era. Like, I like that one with like the open sides. Yeah. Um, keep cool. You know, I get a bit flustered. You know, so, yeah, you know, get sort of, a bit you know, of air myself. in there. Also, I can probably drive one of those without killing myself. Whereas I feel like if I did anything after 1975, I'd be, I'd be toast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. <laughs> So, well, there you go. But actually, the um, the you cans like cars, cars, the old like the old McLarens, like the old McLaren sports cars, the orange ones, those are really cool. Oh. Uh, not a Formula One car, but like yeah, back in the day. Well, anyways, I want to ask you a couple of questions about this year because obviously you, you you talked earlier in the episode before your uh, five guys break uh, about. I, so I mean, if we started this at the beginning of the year, right? I had a, a sponsorship deal on the table potentially for Gabby in Melbourne. Did you? This is we're going a while back. Did you? Yeah, classic driver management. Style, the sponsor obviously ran out of money, fell through, never got in, got in touch. Ah, uh, yeah. Nice. And then I think you were fastest in FP1 in Bahrain, or you were up there, and then you qualified on pole, and then I think you won, you qualified P2, P2 and then you won the first race, right? Mm -hmm. And then I immediately sent a text to Will Beeper's name, and I said, you fucked that one up, didn't you? Oh, uh, yeah, because <laughs> James had actually found a sponsor that had ran... We were potentially going to bring on board for myself and yourself, actually, mm. and it didn't go through. And obviously, when you P1 that race... He was from Melbourne. Yeah. You know I won in Melbourne, so he, I know. he yeah, yeah, up no. twice. That, 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 was, that was rubbing salt in the wounds, mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I text him in Melbourne too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, so going through your season, mate, what has been the highlight of... Obviously, forget Monza, because I You're think... You're on fire out of the gate, and it didn't really yeah. stop. I mean... I mean, the highlight was... For sure, the beginning of the year because it was the only two features I won in the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> and the Novelac uh, approach. Yeah, yeah after it was wins. just about, you know, keeping it cool and scoring the points needed. And, you know, the guys the guys clearly knew that I couldn't risk it anything during the, the year. So they were just, you know, completely diving bombing me every corner in, in the races and everything, trying just, you know, to crash or something like yeah. this because they knew I couldn't risk it. So... At that point, it was just about managing and finishing the podium when I could or winning any race. But uh, my my highlight, I think, was Melbourne. My race in Melbourne was, I don't know, it was, I think, the best race of my life. Because, yeah, yeah it was too many DRS zones and it was very cool. To be honest, uh, I, I, will, I, will, one, I will literally tell you exactly what happened following that race. So, obviously... In F3, and generally speaking, when you win in F3 or in F2, you, you've got your media duties and you've got a lot of things to do following your race. You're not generally 
available until probably a couple of hours after the race. Yeah. So I'd finished my, my feature, which was roughly about the time, maybe an hour later, you came back into the F2 paddock. And I can't remember if it was Roberto. Yeah, I think it was Roberto. So obviously we, we had a coach that yep. coached both of, us this, both of us this year. And I walked up to him and I was like, I think that is one of the single best drives I've ever seen done in a, in a like junior single seat performer. Yeah. Just from the point of view that you're under pressure. It was wet dry, wasn't it? No, no, no. was it wet? No, it was dry. It was dry. No, it was dry. No, it was dry. But he was so four D. I think it was four DRS zones, right, or three DRS zones. Yeah, it was one, two, yeah, four, four. four. Yeah, it was four DRS zones. Or, yeah, four, yeah, four, 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 four DRS zones yeah. with mm. a super efficient DRS in in F three, mm. and he couldn't get out from the, that 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 gap. The guy behind literally couldn't get above one second because the DRS was so powerful that he kept reeling him back in every yeah. single time. And man, it must have been 20 laps or something like this. Not one fucking mistake. No. One mistake, he was done. Like, you, you, were, you were getting past. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I really came into the box and I was like, mate, that is a championship winning drive in the second race of the year. Like, yeah. that's a statement. That's why I said it was the best <laughs> highlight of the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, thank you. <laughs> the no, Novelak was... approval, mate. That's why it's the best. <laughs> Nova, oh, we Endorsed were. by Novelak. We should just start riding that on cars. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was a, it was a special race that one for me. You're so far away from everything. Because like, I was there in Australia as well. It, spe- it felt like a special event for the junior Formula guys. Because it was so weird to be there. You know I mean, like, it was, it was never but this guy, he, he made it a lot also less. Because I won the first round in Bahrain. And then, you know... I, I will be honest, I didn't imagine to, you know, straight away in F3, first round, you know, yeah. not many tests with the GP3 or, you know, I was just a few, like three, four days of testing in overall. So I, I, I had not enough testing, mm. but I was very competitive in the collective test of Formula 3. But then I went to Bahrain, I won the first race and I was not nervous, but I was like, okay, I, I really have the chance maybe to, to build something in this championship. I have a, a championship car, I have... Good engineer, everyone around me, you know. And um, I remember Clem telling me, let's go to Melbourne, uh, let's go to Australia one week before. And uh, we went one week so before. You guys went to the Gold Coast. Didn't yeah, you? we went to Gold yeah, Coast. Yeah. But it was very nice because, um, you know, everything was much more relaxed. I, I managed to be out of the racing world for a bit. Yeah. You know, I went there with Clem and we, we rent a very nice penthouse. Was, was it was it? a nice flat. It was a really nice yeah. flat. Like literally, you know, you know, you know the Gold Coast, but it's huge towers. They must be like sixty floors tall. You're right on the beach. It really is just Australia, Miami, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's It's Australia, Miami, Miami. and uh, it was a. We had some friends there. Yeah, we had some friends there. We had Max and Flavio, so we were there spending time. We went to some bars and we went to, to, you know, to the restaurants and everything. was was amazing. Mm. And then when I went to the race weekend, was like on Wednesday. We we fly to. We flew on Wednesday, like. Yeah, it was so relaxed, you know, and then. Everything was so easy for me, you know. I went mm. to do the track walk. We had fun. We were doing, I think, together. I have a nice photo of us doing the track walk there. And then was, I think, the most easiest weekend in terms of pressure for me. Yeah. So what what I take from this is, is essentially you're, is if you want to win an F3 You're an unbelievable race, driver coach. I am, I am coach. literally the single best driver coach that you can think of. <laughs> yeah. Go on a week away with me doing whatever we want to do, you know, parties, that kind of thing. <laughs> and then you come to the racetrack completely relaxed, bang, and you're on pole and bang, bang you in one. the race. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I reckon. <laughs> yeah. I've got a good idea for a brand name for it, but it might be better off here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and, and you sprung off there from, so that you go into Europe and you're kind of already in championship mode by the time you get to Europe. Once. Yeah, I was I was 20 points ahead in that moment yeah. in the championship. So I had a good margin already. And uh, then, yes, was just about keeping it. Managing there. it, which you did. Great yeah, I was it. always top five. During the first five rounds, I think I, uh, my worst session in Formula 3 was a top five. In yeah. testing or whatever, the worst position I, I got was a top five. Yeah. And then that was very positive. And then I think I step out of the top five in Silverstone. Jesus. So yeah. July I was, was the first time you finished outside yeah, the top five. I think it was the first time. But then you won on Sunday, didn't you? 
No, I, I on on Saturday in Silverstone yeah. I I finish. Okay, I'm not counting the the sprint races. It's yeah, reverse okay. grid, so I mean yeah, yeah. it's difficult. It's, they you still start count with as race wins. I think Marcus Armstrong would attest to that. Sprint yeah. races count as they race wins. They still do count as race wins <laughs> if you win a sprint. <laughs> no, exactly, it counts. But I mean, uh, I, I'm just counting the the, the feature ones. But anyway, That's um, was was cool. I think Silverstone was P6, and then in Spa I completely fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> was out there's, of always, the there's always one round. I mean, even. Even, you know, myself back in my F3 year where, where I finished third in the championship, I had the single worst round, I think, of my career in uh, Red Bull Ring. Had an average qualifying, but it put me in a decent position. It was the year where we had two reverse grids as well, where you had yeah. the oh. reverse grid and then it was reversed yeah. again and then you had your feature. Sprint race one, sprint race two. Yeah, yeah. and so yeah. sprint race one, I was fighting for the lead and I, sh I was... I still think it was a racing incident. Some say it was more my fault. Some say it was more the other guy's fault. I don't know. I, whatever it was. Anyways, didn't score. Had a bit of a puncture. I don't see four. And then the following day, had a horrendous race, uh, starting from P last and finished P12 or P11. But it was good, like, obviously making a lot of moves. And then nearly got killed on Sunday. So, yeah. Yeah, was, that uh, was by, yeah by Flying Leclerc. Flying Leclerc and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. A little tussle between them two, him and, and Victor going into T4, and I myself probably a couple of hundred meters in front, as you can tell. It was a pretty big shunt if he's managed to get me by the apex. So, yeah, yeah, it was uh, large, but that was large. my, yeah, let's you say, fucked that. that weekend of the year. So, <laughs> but so, so you managed it all the way through to, and you had a weird situation right in Monza where all you needed to do was make sure Paul Aaron didn't qualify on pole. Was Did it, it ever go through your mind? to put yourself right in front of Aaron and say, Just put the whenever you on. start your yeah, lap, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be two cars in front and there's no way you're getting into the top 20. It doesn't matter how many repeating penalties I mean, you get as long as he's not on pole. Um, I, at some point, I was also so pissed that I didn't win any more feature races that I was like, man, I need to do it in the last round. I need to do it in the last round. So I didn't... Is I, for sure I cared about the championship, but I knew that the chances of Aaron winning was very low. You know, He needed mm. to score everything he could. Yeah. Literally, every the fastest lap pole, winning two races, man, everything he could. So I was like more focused about really trying to win the feature on, on Sunday. But, you know, my, my quality was okay, but not the best one. That was mm. P5, P4, I think, P4. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, on Sunday I was flying, but then I... I was trying to get out of the yeah, in the last corner. I got the curve, and I almost did a Leclerc in the wall yeah. in the last corner. So, Ooh. Well, you know, who was uh, Peroni? Peroni kid from Australia had the largest F three shunt I've ever I seen. I think anyone's ever. Yeah, had it was the biggest at parabolica one. there. Yeah, yeah but terrible. since then, actually, I think that's the reason why we've now got like a proper gravel trap rather than sausage. Curves. What used to be sausage. Curves. Basically, a runway. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> sausage. It was curve. a runway. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yeah, no. So uh, yeah, so it was a good weekend. Good after party too. In Milan. Yeah. Do you remember much of it or? Oh, everything. Why would I? <laughs> 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 no, it was good times, good times. Um, James, you were there. I was there. I was in a different area to you guys. How so? Yeah, I was running a very different budget that night. Oh, I, nothing came out of my pocket, which yeah, is great. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I think Trident was celebrating, weren't they? So Trident was, was a yeah, big celebration. No, I think, you know what? The, getting getting into the the area where all the tables were, it was like getting into North Korea. It was like, they, they weren't having a bar of it. Oh, it mate, just, it was yeah. so hard to get in. And uh, But we managed to get you in at some point, didn't we? No. Oh, no. No, no, no. I was, I was, I was good, You were chilling was, out with a backbone. I was down there hanging out with the plebs. No worries. Um, but we had so, so yeah, there, we had a few dramas in Milan, which I think we've covered on the podcast before. But have we? Uh, when my mate got the absolute shit kicked out of him for his Rolex. Yeah, no, yeah, we had a stolen Rolex that weekend. We had a uh, yeah, it was a, it was a rough weekend. Yeah. for but no, the funny thing was so there's this after party organisation that does a, a few of them, and so we're looking through the ticket price. So you guys, you text me in the morning, say we're, we're doing that after party. I said, like, all right. So I text my mates who were like there from New Zealand. I was just kind of taking showing them around. This is what Europe's like, and um, the so the prices come through, and it's like a lot for a silver what they call a silver table, and then like 
quite a bit less than a lot for a bronze table. And they were all kind of like, no, no, we should do the bronze. I was like, trust me, like you just want general. If you, unless you're up with the big dogs, you, you just want to go GA. And sure enough, like they sell way too many GA tickets. And anyone with a silver or bronze table just gets absorbed by the crowd. At one point, Ali stood on top of somebody's bronze table to talk to you yeah. in your culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think she knocked over about four flutes of champagne. Yes, no, uh, <laughs> Ali was uh, Ali was having a bit of I a... I believe the medical term is... Uh, <laughs> did, did she talk to you? She, no, so basically she, she tried. Was, you, she was gone. You, you remember the, the, the layout of the club and yeah. the tables were a little bit higher yeah, up we the were ones higher, we were on. Yeah. And you had the tables right below and there was this sort of couch there for the table. And Ali's just gone steaming in down the inside, mate. Has literally pushed two people out of the way to stand on the couch to give me a hug to say hello. And then just proceeds to chatting Wait, to me. I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and then we, I'm looking at her, I'm like, Ali, you do realise you're standing on top of two <laughs> Somebody people, Somebody else's right? table. And she's like, oh, oh yeah, it's true. <laughs> so she just turned around and walked off. And At yeah. the end of that night, because like, yeah, she, she got after it that night, because she'd been putting up with me and my mates for the better part of a week and a half. Yeah. And so, yeah, she, she had a, a few liveness. And by the end of it, her and her pal were so smashed, and I was kind of over the drink. It had been a long trip. I, was, I wasn't drinking that night, so I was sober, but... It's around about 2 a.m. And then, like, I'm sober getting these two girls who cannot really walk that well trying to, like, get them into a cab. I looked like the biggest <laughs> Like, it was such a bad look. It was such a bad look. I explained to me, oh, it's my girlfriend. <laughs> like, it's just not, I'm not trying to... <laughs> it was rough. It was rough. And then my mate tried to leave the club and, yeah, like we said, got the absolute lights knocked out of him. Hmm. Uh, and a yacht master ripped off his wrist. Got a couple of questions for you, mate. <laughs> We're going to take it way it back to the old carding days. Oh, okay. Rough carding time for you? Loved it. I yeah? think, no, you had a good carding no, career. No, no, I had a good one. Yeah? You had a, you had I a mean, solid carding career. Yeah. Who'd you drive for? CRG my entire life. Nice. Yeah. I like His CRG. His entire life. CRG. I love a CRG. Okay. To Five years with cards? them. For how many? Five. Five. So Mini, what? two juniors, one OK, and yeah, two, four, four years. Good on you. What time did you move into cars? I was 15. Oh, um, they're getting so young, you know. 20. You know, you know my yeah. biggest wake-up call was last year when I looked at Juan and I looked around the F2 grid and I was like, holy shit, not one of them's above 18. It's amazing how old you were this year and like, and just your second year in F2. Mate, like, I was like, it was, holy shit, I am a There's so veteran. many rookies this year. I was Because I feel like 20... I'm going to get my numbers wrong here somewhere, but 22... There was a lot of your your Armstrongs, your Deruvalas, you had, you know, your Boshongs, you know, your, your Nassanis, your, your furniture, you know. And there was a lot less of those guys who were doing their kind of second, third year this year. Like, there was a lot of third and fourth years last year, and they've all fucked off. So there's a lot of new blood from Formula 3 this year. So you and Juan looked like, Wait, you we know, looked around, the we silver like, foxes of the paddock. Yeah, honest. honestly, yeah. we looked, we, I mean, I myself dressing up as a 40-year-old anyway. Doesn't help. Always. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. help. But actually, but it's talking, rubbed off. <laughs> talking about outfits, you know, it's actually rubbed off. It feels like this is Clem Nova, like fashion school that way. I mean, you've got yourself a, a beautiful jacket there. James sporting the cardigan. Lovely cardigan. Looking yeah, lovely. I'm really I mean, enjoying it, obviously, I'm still in my, yeah. in my suit. There. We look like we're suited up to go and sell Bibles. But, like, but yeah, no. You're looking good, mate. You're looking black. really good, actually. Very sexy. What's, what's the inspiration behind all this? And please don't say Nova, like... Well, you want the true answer? Or yeah, it? go on then. Give me the true answer. Novelak. So I feel like <laughs> oh. everyone who befriends Novelak just starts no, I mean, dressing a bit better, like over a bit. Of, would you agree? Like if, if once you get to know Clem, you almost feel like you kind of have to step up your game. Yeah, because I mean, at the beginning, I was was wearing some clothes that Tinker. were a little bit different. Like, I mean, <laughs> Drogovic style. Street <laughs> Drogovic I mean, yeah. style. See, he's probably my biggest failure in my career as a fashionista. <laughs> He's got good fashion though, Dre. It's very different to your no, right it's different and I love it. I'm I, loving I'm I, loving I this used it and I, I still use this type of clothes. You I, know, I run a bit of drugs. I mean, Clem, Clem opened my eyes to some stuff because it's true, you know. I, I, like, if you go like this to a meeting, you know, you're in a board meeting. Mm. You go there and there is some entrepreneurs and everything and they see you using that large things and, you know. Yeah. It is still very nice, but I mean, you cannot go to this type of meeting with these clothes. So... Mm. And also, uh, you know, also my family dress a little bit like this. So I, 
Yeah, you know, it was a little bit of an influence of, of everyone. Respect, yeah. And then I started to get this type of clothes and yeah. I liked it. No, yeah, I'm on board, mate. I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I, I'm going to reiterate the fact Trouble that, um, you know, I spent a year with Felipe. I tried my hardest. I said, look, mate, just wear your cashmere cardigan there. You put on some proper shoes. Those are sneakers. Those are not shoes. He loves a sneaker. He loves a sneaker. And I, I kept telling him, man, don't say anything about the sneakers. They are so nice. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I know, but still. I love like, it. Yeah, but at least, you know, you, you're wearing some, some... So, I think this is the perfect example, actually. We've got some Loro Pianas. Here. Like some genuine Loro Pianas? Genuine Loro Pianas. And then over Beautiful. here, we've got some Loro Ziaras. Um, <laughs> it's actually from Zara. <laughs> Okay, yeah, but they I have the best the things, man. They have the best things. And Zara's fantastic. They have the best things. Zara's you spend like twenty times less, yeah. and you get basically the same. Yes. For sure, not the the same quality. No, you no, know. in here, but you know, it looks good on a podcast. Yeah, but it's amazing. So, mate, getting back to some meals. Obviously, this being a, a sort of screaming meals uh, part of the show, food, drinks, you know, that kind of thing. What is your go-to pre-raised meal? Uh, pre-race meal well, this year you raced so early it's probably yeah it's probably breakfast much. yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah it was breakfast but many times as well it was after lunch i think yeah. qualies or something like this yeah so. what, what's the thing i that think gets chicken you in the mood? chicken chicken and, yeah i like i don't like a bit to of uh, a bit of a feijoada maybe well, for sure, this is the best, but they don't make it in the Catherine in Formula 3. Yeah. Right? So, if ah, they had it, my here friend... Here we go. Can we allowed to say, are we allowed to... Yeah, we're yeah. allowed to talk uh, about F3, F2 catering. catering. What was the worst one this year? Because I don't know if we've done that much on the F2 Man, Catering. Man, I don't... Maybe. You know, a lot of people say bad things about it, but I don't dis dislike it. Like, it, it's okay. I mean, for sure, it's expensive, you know. We know we all know yeah. it's expensive, the Catherine. You know, you can eat in a very, very good restaurant for that price. Yeah. But, I mean, there is good food. You can, you know, have... Yeah. Like Do you know what I can smell? I ah. can smell a friendship with the staff and not yeah. wanting to annoy them. <laughs> but yeah, so no, you, you actually don't find the catering that bad. No, I don't. Wow. The, I think you are sometimes the, the pizza's not that. Shit. I like the pizza. The pizza's not bad. I like the pizza. Pasta's always like re reliably terrible. No. No, but like, pasta with with the tomato sauce, it's okay. But that's for the sure. Thing. If but you go like, to the how Italian much can restaurant, you fuck that up though? Like, it, like you could, but if you if you made it, you'd do it better, right? But you know, you always need to look at the positive points as well. You're just looking <laughs> at the negative. <laughs> Man, the the coffee, the coffee machine there, it's fucking good. Come on. We, yeah, how many, how many cups have we, we stole from them? Oh, we've stolen a few <laughs> of those pods. Yeah, no, Every don't... time we take one coffee, we take five cups. <laughs> <laughs> we take five pods with us because we've got an espresso yeah. machine Bruno's as well. Bruno's going to send you an invoice if you're not kidding. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, no, no, it's, it's true that there are some, some good things about it. But you, you are the first driver that's come on here and actually actively said, said actually it's like actually it. not that bad. Yeah, no. I don't say it's good. But I don't, <laughs> oh, I don't say so. It's, you're changing your tune. <laughs> no, I didn't say it's good. I just said it's not bad. It's different. Good for me. It's when you go to a, a top restaurant. You know, it's not that bad. You can eat it. It's not that. Oh, I'm not going there. Man. The food is terrible. No, oh, man. We, we it's just because like that, you are too we? much so sophisticated. You know. Uh, you know I'm you are a guy that is like. Or you eat in the best restaurant in Paris, or you don't go to the restaurant. That's that's the type of Clement That's Novelac, true, actually. So, it's a terrifying yeah. text when you get a message from Novelac saying, should we do dinner? And you're like... But fair play, this year, <laughs> I will bring you to the best places in Brazil. Not not expensive restaurants. The best places in Brazil, the best restaurants, are the ones that you just walk out of your house, yeah. you look to the right, and there is Seu João. Seu João. Seu He does the feijoada. A Bourdain kind of documentary. He does the feijoada, the rice, the chicken, the steak, everything, and how much it costs, you think? Uh, I mean... Give it a try. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's under five pounds for sure. Perfect. Yeah. Everything for five euros, let's say. Well, anyways, we've got to talk about this trip Brazil. that I've got coming up. Wait, you're, what? you're doing the America. Rio 500 miles. No, no. So I'm going to Brazil. As you know, very yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, 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 roughly, yeah. I will be in Brazil when this video comes out. I'll probably the 500 miles will have been completed. But anyways, let's say that we're you know back a couple of weeks before. I'm going to Brazil. You're uh, we're going to race alongside each other. At the you can, why don't you announce it in Portuguese, and then all of our Portuguese uh, Br uh, Brazilian fans can come on. get down and, and watch. And we'll just put a clip out before oh, the episode I, comes my out. My mind's Go gone blank. No, no, no. Eu amo Brasil. 
Uh, how do you say I'm going? Eu vou. Eu vou ao Brasil em duas semanas. Semanas? Good yeah. job, yeah. Uh, uh, for? For? Não. Para? Para? É o... 505, 500? Correr. As... Para correr. As 500 miles de... Karting. Karting. Perfect, man. Starting to get it? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, anyways. You're going to go to do a Brazilian go-karting race. The actual real 500 <laughs> miles. It's not Indianapolis. No. It's the karting one. I'm That actually... Grand Javiana. Genuinely. But you know the, le the, the F1 legends from Brazil? I'm super they are jealous. Really. I'm super... Because I've been watching Felipe since Massa, Massa Barrichello, like, Canan... Oh, wait, you know. 2010, they had the bodywork on it. Like, yeah, the whole... Th I've, yeah, I've, I've watched this Mate, race before. Yeah. yeah, It's actually one of the most... It's probably the most important Brazilian carling race. Casper, well, one yeah. of... Yeah, there is like different ways, you know. You, you go to the most important is the national championship, the yeah. Brazilian. But I mean, the the one that the F1 driver, ex F1 drivers race, and the actual F1 drivers, because for example, Drogo yeah. is a reserve driver, and he will be racing there as well. It is a bit so, of a dream team that yeah. we're pulling is off. It, is there actually. a live stream operator? Yeah. Of course, there's a live stream, James. I mean, you know what I'm. Can thinking. we announce it? The, the lineup or not? Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, but now the, the it's race probably will be happened. It's done. Then, so <laughs> the, okay. the lineup will have True. been announced. But I mean, it will. Have, and you've probably seen me commentating on it. You, you'll have seen James commentate the race in English, because obviously I think it'd be quite <laughs> difficult to find a, a British commentator. My my miles. my Portuguese expires at Cerveza. It's Cerveza, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but it'll be me. It'll be you. Who else? Drugo. Drugo. Caio. Caio. And your brother. My brother and Sete Kamara. And Sete Kamara. I've heard so, he knows how to party, actually. Oh, he does. I think Who? he probably does know how to Sete party. Sete Kamara. Really? I yeah. don't know. Never went party with him. Maybe. You. But, uh, yeah, so it's it's a bit of a weird thing, though, because it's six drivers. but two between carts. Two carts. Yeah, it makes sense. So, essentially, I think the, uh, the, the run plan at the moment, correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, I'm definitely not doing quali. No, we've yeah, we've established My that. My brother, the whoever is the quickest is doing quality. Yeah, exactly. So that's the that's the thing. And then on top of that, I think I'm probably not doing the first stint. I'll probably do second stint. Get my stint out early on. Mm. Let the boys handle it whilst I head off to the bar to get a couple of kaiparinas. That's, that's my kind of endurance. <laughs> I think that's the, uh, the 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 run plan. You want to do like the early evening session, you know, and then yeah. really just clock off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I won't be driving past six o'clock at night. No, I wouldn't recommend it. No. And then I'll let you boys handle the rest and uh, I'll be there on the pit wall. With? Kaiparina. With a Kaiparina. Yeah. <laughs> and? And uh, whoever else you can find Vampy. on Vampy. I suppose. Vampy. <laughs> and Vampy. I'll be on the pit wall with Vampy as well. You won't know, James, but some of our Brazilian viewers will probably know. The legend. The, the legend. legend. The legend. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, but, so you're looking for, you're spending New Year's in Brazil New as well, Year's in Brazil that as well. kind of carry on, so you've got uh, a lot of content to look forward to. And uh, mate, what's your predictions for next year? Go on, give us, give us your thoughts, what, what's your thoughts going into Quite next like year? Um, I'm in a good team. You are a team. Um, They never won the championship, but they have been always on right top there. three, top yeah. two, so... Um, they finished third with Jack this season, even mm -hmm. if he struggled a lot at the beginning of the season. First half, yeah. yeah. Everyone kind of almost rolled and, and then he made this charge. Yeah. He was the one that scored the most points probably after summer break, Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Mm. So I would say um, I'm very positive for next season, especially with this team. I've been working with them in Abu Dhabi for the test and was very positive. How was it, yeah, working with the team? Obviously... You've gone from um, racing in an Italian team like Trident, which is very much family oriented. How, how does it feel to change into a British team? Because sometimes it can be quite different in terms of the. I, I can tell you firsthand it is. Yeah, it's, no, but it's yeah. quite different. And I wouldn't say yeah, the, it's different. The, the, the culture around the team. I mean, like, you know how it's Giacomo and all these guys, you know, in Trident, they are, you know, they are very Italian people. Yeah. But uh, it, nice. Like, they're, my they're engineer friendly. next year yeah. will, be, will be Spanish. Yeah. So he's a little bit like, you yeah. know, Italian and Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And, um, but the rest is, it's very British. But they were very nice to me, you know, and, and, I can see that we are pointing to the right direction, I would say. Mm -hmm. And Good um, idea. I think Abu Dhabi was very positive. For my first time in the car, I was straight on pace and quite quick, I would yeah. say. So, and also, you know, Jack was Trident F3. His style obviously worked in the Trident F3 car. Yours goes all right. By yeah, but Jack like... Yeah, exactly. Jack's like a very 
pointy car, I would say. He likes a pointy car. And that's a little bit like I want as yeah. well. I, yeah, I was sorry. pushing to get more and more, to be honest, in the mm -hmm. test. But um, I actually it's already... found the same in my Alfa Romeo test. Yeah. Remember, so like he actually did. I don't know if you've seen the reel on my uh, <laughs> on my Instagram there. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a quick picture. Very of the, front, the Alfa Romeo we'll, 157. Yeah, very we'll, fronty. We'll put it on the screen here for the viewers. Maybe a couple of pictures of the car James was driving. It's very but... similar to a Formula 2 oh, car. I've seen ways. this video. <laughs> yeah. Very similar to a Formula 2 car. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> well, the... The weight is probably very similar. Yeah, weight's enough. probably similar. I mean, I'll tell Not you one thing. Obviously. I've never been so scared in my life. I became a passenger princess for probably about 20 minutes next to this guy before we put it in the uh, in the gravel. Yeah. And uh, You put it in the gravel. Oh, open testing. You need to find open the limit. Test yeah, he, was, he found the limits. You were pushing. Yeah. Oh, mate. Inside mate. of five corners, I turn to him and I go, holy shit, you're actually good. He was sideways, mate. It was greasy conditions, half slicks. I was like, wow. It's apparently jet fuel all the way down the street. But was well. everything under control or you were just pushing? Yeah. Under was, control? Yeah. I beg to disagree. There was one time when it got a little bit out of control, but you know. <laughs> what, the one where we finished in the gravel? Yeah. Yeah. That was but the only out of control moment I'm going to say, yeah. Even but then, I had it most of, the way, most of the way around the corner. I had that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and on that bombshell, I guess. It's probably well, time to end. Yeah, I mean, Gabby, let's, let's look forward to you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming Thank on. you very much for You've the invite. You've been an amazing guest. Friend of the show. We'll be rooting on for you next season, mate. Fucking go, 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 Gabby. Yeah, get, get prepared for some seriously biased race coming yes. in Formula 2 next you year. You will probably see some reels where we're literally screaming at the screen if something goes wrong or if you're winning. And yeah, I mean, all the best to you. And come back on whenever you want to. Thank you very much. No, it won't. <laughs> Thank you, James. No worries, mate. Hey, 